the title is too long, but uh, I will try to click on the keyboard. Uh, I will try to uh, fit uh, the presentation into the objectives of this uh, of this conference, mainly uh, from the perspective of geometers and people working in control. So, uh, first uh, thing, I will report uh, some geometric uh, results I have uh, in the context of uh, spectral inequalities for elliptic operators on compact manifolds. So, here we have uh, two words, one with uh, essentially one is Meister, uh, and one with uh, Michael Richard and Julian Legrado. So, we are uh, interested in the validity of certain, uh, let's say, uh, spectral inequalities. So if you have, let's say, you have two manifolds, one demanding manifold, let's say, compact, without boundary, and then you have there your Laplacian, let's say your positive Laplacian, and you have your uh, discrete system of the functions uh, associated to to one system of the value. So the idea here is how to estimate for open subset of your manifolds, let's say that an infinity norm of uh, an abode, so let's say if your open set is abode for all other, all other open uh, subset of uh, any of these things. <coughs> and let's say you want to compare this, uh, let's say you can take a bowl of values to add with respect to the supremum of the agent function uh, in a ball of values R. So here you have something, uh, some price that you have to pay for the validity of this inequality, some constant that depends on the, depends on the of your, uh, let's say, agent value. And then the analysis of how to estimate in a chart like this kind of uh, constant is uh, of important uh, role for uh, people in control. So, uh, Mainly, uh, my work is <coughs> related to the validity of this L infinity estimate instead of, uh, let's say, uh, here instead of taking one bowl, uh, we can take the complete manifold, and then here we can take, let's say, one omega. And in the same way, we are interested in how to estimate this, uh, this constant. So the second inequality in which we are interested in how to estimate, uh, let's say, the L2 norm with respect to the complete manifold of this agent function in terms of the L2 norm of the same agent function but with respect to one open subset. And then exactly uh, the idea is how to uh, estimate the constant that you have uh, here for the value of this, uh, let's say, spectral inequality. So why this is important? <coughs> because let's say if you are, let's say, a PD guy, Let's say you want to, uh, uh, let's say, to work with the controllability of the diffusion model associated <coughs> with the Laplacian. So essentially, that you have is your heat equation and your initial condition. Then we know that we can, let's say, write uh, the solution to the heat equation in terms of proximity. And then can you see to the behavior of the solution uh, when the time is big, when the time goes to infinity, we know that if we start with what, uh, let's say, initial condition. So uh, the behavior of the solution to your heat equation goes to, let's say, zero. Because of the dissipative properties of the semi. So question uh, is how you can, uh, let's say, perturbate uh, your system in a such way that, uh, let's say, you can uh, handle the controllability of the solution. What means the null controllability, for example, of the solution means that you choose one time, and then uh, the idea is how you can add some uh, particular terms of the right-hand side uh, of the heat equation, and then you can see that I wrote one uh, function that at least and somehow localize it in one open subset of your manifold. And then the idea is uh, if for one initial condition uh, of this heat equation, the 
solution of this system satisfies that time t, your solution is zero. So this is a completely different behavior of the standard behavior that you have for the heat equation here that you can uh, that you want to study is the existence of this kind of function which we call the input in control theory. So you want to study the existence of inputs uh, which are functions localized in this open source set and omega. And for this uh, input that depends on the time capital T, you want to guarantee that your solution of time T uh, capital T is uh, zero. So somehow you start with one initial condition and at some time you drive the solution from your initial condition to the rule step. So if you do this, you say, okay, I am working with a <coughs> system that is null controllable. So somehow uh, this is the problem in partial differential equation. This is a problem that one calls the null controllability of a, of a system. And then to guarantee this PDE property, the, let's say, micro-local tool that you have to prove is this kind of spectral inequality. So one can prove that if you have the validity of this spectral inequality or the validity of this spectral inequality for some of the functions in a some way, and then you can say, take a combination of your functions. And you measure, let's say, this with respect to some more biggest uh, eigenvalues. So you want to study also the L2 uh, norm of this linear combination of eigenfunction, and you want to guarantee exactly the same kind of spectral inequality. So this is a mathematical problem. This is a spectral problem. And this is, uh, let's say, our application. Why we are interested in this kind of, uh, this kind of things. So here, I just, uh, show uh, this, uh, in this slide, this particular <coughs> problem in the case of the Laplacian, let's say, uh, in 0 to pi on the circle, where we identify these two points, and then the idea is how we can show the existence of this kind of inputs that there I go D. So well, just to show you how it works, uh, let's say, we we'll start with one, uh, how, the, how works the controllability problem, so to start with one initial condition that in this uh, picture you can see here, maybe you can see on the left, you start with one initial condition and so you can see there a bottom, blue bottom. This is somehow the projection of this blue bottom is uh, your set omega. And then in which way you can add your input in such a way that you have the controllability for this, let's say for this, uh, for this model. So, this is what happens. You start with one input, and then you add, after another <coughs> input, you get the new controllability of the system. This is how I explained to them. Okay? What I explained to them. So, well, uh, this is an, one example of one controllable system, and on the right hand side, you saw one system that is not controllable. So, you add inputs, and then you destroy completely the behavior of your, of your solution. So, uh, so uh, this is, uh, let's say, the historical uh, perspective about the validity of this kind of spectral inequalities. So in 1980, uh, Harold Donnelly and Charles Pepperman proved that indeed you have the validity of this spectral inequality and the best fa factor that you can get here as that exponential form. So like you can see there, you have an exponential growth that depends uh, in the exponent uh, in terms of the square root of your eigenvalue. So uh, this, is, uh, this was a celebrated uh, work in geometric analysis, because in particular, with the validity of this uh, spectral <coughs> inequality, you can, let's say, uh, estimate the Hausdorff measure of the nodal set of one eigen function, let's say, the set of point of your manifold where the eigen function uh, is zero. So uh, there are, somehow this is a relevant problem, and with this kind of things, uh, especially in equality, you can prove that indeed this is the kind of, uh, let's say, estimate that you have for the spectral measure. So in this uh, paper, Donnelly and Pepperman proved the validity of this, and this was relevant, like I mentioned. It was a paper published in Inventions. 
So the question uh, then is, okay, we have this, uh, what we can say about the validity of this spectral inequality for the case of some of the functions, and then Jason and the Bo, uh, David Jason from MIT and Gilles Bo, France, they prove that you need to can extend uh, the validity of this spectral inequality to the case of some of the functions with this application in particular. And then in blue, you can see uh, the corresponding problem of uh, the infinity norm that is here in the setting of, uh, let's say, the login property of Fermat and Donnelly. But this is the, let's say, L2 norm estimate for some of the functions. <coughs> Something that is interesting is that if you prove the validity of this uh, spectral inequality, then you can deduce the validity of this uh, L infinity estimate if you use, for example, one sobrependent theorem argument and it will be the sobrependent theorem. So this is what happens. So well, uh, like I mentioned, uh, the validity of these two spectral inequalities uh, give you uh, applications to control theory, but uh, not just for the case of the heat equation of the Laplacian, which is the prototype of a positive and zero differential operator. So here you can think about a more general problem where you consider one general uh, elliptic operator and same here. So the validity uh, of this spectral inequality in the case of eigen functions, eigen values of elliptic operators, general elliptic operators, also have applications to the controllability, to the new controllability of this model. So, uh, okay, some remarks maybe is that when you prove these spectral inequalities, you use a fundamental technique than microlocal analysis, one called uh, Carleman estimate. And for the proof of Kahneman estimate, you need, uh, you use the locality of your operator. You use the actual operator preserve the support of functions. But this is not, this, uh, is not a property that satisfies, let's say, positive powers uh, the Laplace, let's say, if you take this operator, uh, this operator is somehow not local. So you don't have there for this kind of operator, you don't have uh, the locality property, so also you don't have the validity of uh, and then you don't have the tool by excellent that one use in the proof of this kind of uh, spectral inequality. So the question then is, uh, okay, what to do if we want to generalize the validity of this spectral inequality in the case of non-local operators, that is in the case of zero differential operators. So this is a problem, okay? And of course, uh, with the corresponding motivation of applying this to to controllability problem. So well, uh, this is our problem. Uh, this is the main question in this, in this short talk, is to give you uh, some information about the validity of, this, of, the, of, the, of these two spectral inequalities, and then to give you some results about, let's say, the controllability of the institution model in them. So well, uh, I am talking here about the zero differential operators. This is one specific model, but of course, uh, example prototype, but of course we are interested in the case of general elliptic zero differential operators, positive zero differential operators. So maybe let me introduce what I mean by zero differential operators. So uh, the first thing is that zero differential operators, to define zero differential operators, one has to uh, keep in mind. To define zero differential operators uh, that one uses is the Fourier transform. And it's a good way to represent the uh, continuous linear operators on manifolds, continuous linear operators on RM. So the idea is that you start with one uh, continuous linear operator, let's say on RM. And one can prove, is believe me, that you, this uh, operator you can associate to a distribution, temporary distribution, on a plus RM, in such a way that you can always write the action of this operator uh, to the smooth functions with, uh, with uh, compact support. So let's take here one smooth function with compact support. 
And then the question is over temporal junction of this operator. This function in terms of the Fourier transport of the function. So I have to write figure one again. So let me then observe the at F, the Fourier transport of the function. And so uh, when you write the action, the thing is that you can associate this function to this operator, this distribution, and then you can write this in terms of the Fuller inversion, uh, inverse Fourier transport of function. <coughs> <coughs> So any continuous linear operator on a end, uh, for this you can associate one distribution having this integral form <coughs> in terms of the Fourier transform. And then the question is, okay, if I can do this uh, for, let's say, this global representation uh, for a end, for operators acting on a end, what happens <coughs> if I consider continuous linear operator, let's say, on open subset of, uh, of a end? Then if I get one similar representation after this construction, then on a manifold, I can define also zero differential operators just by localizing this, this operator. You know, this non differential geometry of the localized operator that seems to be a pullback kind of construction. So, to define zero differential operators on open subset, that you have to do is to choose a, a specific function, A, that in this case you take, a, which is defined. Let's say here, the first component is defined in U, and the second component is defined in, in Rn. And then, <coughs> how you define this? You choose functions, the, this kind of distribution that is by these inequalities that you can see there. Uh, this, these functions belong to one specific, let's say, family of, that in the theory of the differential operator we call symbols. So this uh, function we call the symbol of this operator. And then the symbol, which is A, satisfies that, uh, that spectral, that uh, inequality is there. So you have derivatives of the symbol, and then you have, the, you have to measure the growth of this uh, derivative, of the growth of the symbol, in terms of three parameters, which is M, rho, and delta. M is the order of your symbol, which uh, gives you the information that your symbol does grow uh, more than polynomially, somehow like this. But then the uh, one that gives you information about how uh, you can measure the decay or the growth of the derivative. So <coughs> why this is important? Because if you want uh, to define this, uh, let's say, operator in a good way, if for any function A you want to define this operator, so you need to have the control, uh, let's say, of this integral. And a good way to do this is, let's say, to define good uh, simple classes. OK, well? So uh, just then you choose one uh, symbol defined on U cross Rn and satisfying this spectral inequality, then that you have is that uh, this uh, integral definition makes sense and then you can define, let's say, zero differential operators using that integral form, which is essentially somehow like this, <coughs> okay? So when, uh, once that you define the zero differential operators on open subset, you can make just the extension, the standard extension to manifolds. And then, uh, somehow, you can see that uh, if you consider one zero differential operator on a manifold, then you have to associate one symbol in a similar way that we did in Rn. But then, uh, the symbol uh, now is a section of the cotangent space. So any property that you study uh, on the operator, you have to uh, analyze in terms of the symbol. So the idea is now, what happens if I consider zero differential operators on a manifold? How I can construct the symbol? So I construct the symbol uh, just by uh, localizing the operator, but then the symbol is a section of the cotangent So. Uh, Well, so uh, examples of zero differential operators then are, let's say, any partial differential operator you can write in terms of, let's say, uh, in terms of the Fourier transform, when you localize, you can take, let's say, the Laplacian associated with your metric, or let's say you can take 
positive powers of your operation. Okay, let's say you do that. Okay? Could you say again what you mean by localize? I mean, at least the fact that you do three things are uh -huh. the Well, localize, that uh, I mean is that you take your functions on your manifold, and then you look these functions uh, using the charts, using the local coordinate systems, uh, in open subset of Rn, and then you define the zero differential operator. And then you use the pullback uh, construction to, to define these operators on many. So your A is what? Is it the function? Or so you wrote A yes. section of the content bundle. But should it be the function of the content bundle? Like on the board, you wrote. Uh -huh. so, so I think you said function, but you wrote section. Yes. Uh, the idea is that uh, this is somehow an identification, but here, here is uh, a distribution, but this is somehow the cotangent space of RN. But so are you reading it section? Like yes. The one form. There is a one form. Uh, no one form. I mean, ah, okay. No, no, no. Uh, maybe, maybe have to, to be more precise. Maybe just, let's say, it's a smooth function of the time. It's a way in which you can write a simple interest of the operator. You can figure out things like a function, a smooth function, and so on. So, well, um, just because I am interested in elliptic operators, or why elliptic operators? Because elliptic operators are uh, operators with discrete spectrum, and these are telephone yeah. operators. Uh, let's say if uh, one is interested in, let's say, in Geometry, one is interested in country computing the index of elliptic operators, let's say. This is, you know very well, maybe the Adidas Single Index Journal. But uh, <coughs> if not, uh, if you're interested more in, more in uh, analytical uh, questions, you realize, uh, let's say, the analytic properties of elliptic operators, and for this, just I am writing here the definition of elliptic operators. Uh, the symbol does vanish in the coordinate system, okay, and with that polynomial. So, uh, just to present the results then, uh, the result that I can uh, report today is that uh, if you consider one zero differential operator on your manifold, and you put operator, let's say, uh, is in such a way that uh, the symbol is aesthetically positive on the coordinate space, then you have the values of the L2 spectral inequality, which ones one of the main, uh, let's say, questions at the beginning. <coughs> and so we have the values of this L infinity spectral inequality of both. Okay, so this is an extension of the result of Donnelly and Peppermann. And then, uh, because of the validity of this, uh, we can prove, let's say, we can, we have the null controllability of, let's say, diffusion models, of the heat equation associated to positive powers of the elliptic operators, in particular, we recover the non set in the case of the Laplacian system. So we extend a little bit more this kind of procedure. So we did other, uh, let's say, other words, but 